Let's get to it. YouTube, what is going on, you delicious guardians? It is Mesa Sean back at it with another episode of Ask Mesa, where you guys ask me questions and I try to answer them every week. And uh, you guys, again, can ask me any question you want. It doesn't have to be about Destiny, but primarily, most of them are about Destiny, so we're going to get into it. And I hope I didn't scare you guys with my kills on Shadowfall video. Again, guys, channel's about only games I love, but I do appreciate the feedback on it, so um, I might sprinkle a little bit of kill zone here and there because, God, that game is so much fun. You're doing yourself a disservice if you love multiplayer and don't pick up that game but uh if i do want to do a lot of uploads i might just do it on the mesa sean 2 channel or i don't know i'll sprinkle it around here and there don't worry it won't interfere at all with any of my daily destiny videos see like i hate when people say the word content i don't know it sounds like a buzzword it reminds me of when those like uh rock stars they say well we made this record we were recording a record you're not this is 2015 you don't make records or you make albums or you make I don't know. You're, rec you're recording on Pro Tools. You're not making a record in 1965. I don't know. That's another tangent I go on. And I'm off on a tangent already. So let's jump into the questions. Okay, this one comes from Mean Mr. Pringle. I have a question. Do you think we should be able to reroll our guns that we get from faction rank of packages like we can Iron Banner guns? God, I wish that could. I wish we could just reroll uh, all legendaries that we could. Because think about so many times I've gotten like a good drop of a weapon and there's just one or two things that really bug me about it that uh, makes it semi unusable in some some situations. Like, for example, I love my Vanquisher, right? But I'm actually consider buying the one that uh, you can get just straight up from New Honor because the, the role I got, uh, it's got a hip fire mod, totally useless. Uh, it's only got 22 rounds and no field scout. It has nothing for reload or anything. So I, I don't, well, I do use it in PvE only because I just like the damn thing. Uh, but right now, I'm, it's really just a PvP gun. But in PvE, I need something with a bigger clip or a faster reload. That's why my For the People has uh, Spray and Play. Even though it's not, uh, it doesn't have as high impact as the Vanquisher, I use it more in PvE because, man, that reload is so fast. And even though it's less impact, I just spray enemies down with bullets. But I wish all factions, or even the Vanguard and Crucible Quartermaster for that, had some sort of way that you could reroll things for just like the way, uh, the way you do with Iron Banner with just like modes of light maybe do it for strange coins because i know we all have a ton of strange coins because no heavy ammo synth and i certainly haven't been really buying that much stuff from zur so now this next one is from sam arend and it's not really a question it's more what do i think about it so i'm actually gonna take a screenshot tweet it out and then copy that tweet picture link or whatever in the description he's got some brilliant ideas for pvp bounties and pve bounties because let's face it guys i certainly think we could use an overhaul and get some new bounties i mean how many times am i gonna go kill tether and what's his name frigoris or frigus from the uh Shrine of Oryx mission, so I really think he's got some great ideas in terms of uh, some cool bounties, so check that link in the description. Okay, next one from Brian Hatcher. He says, hey Mace, I got a good question for your next Q&A. How did you get your start on YouTube? When did you catch that big break? Any tips for new YouTubers? Thanks for the hard work. I know you, sir. Didn't you win one of my giveaways early on? Uh, let's see. Well, how did I get my start? I used to do guitar review videos back in 2008. and had a huge following, actually, because I had a severe addiction to buying and selling uh, ESP guitars. That's like my that's still my favorite brand of guitars. And I'm a total Metallica James Hetfield fanboy. So I'd buy all these Metallica SIGs, James Hetfield SIGs, buy them then play them for a couple of months, do a review of it, and then sell them to buy other guitars. It was just like a back and forth thing. But um, I found I, I just stopped doing it because in the guitar community, it just it's there's such obnoxious, elite, elitist, arrogant assholes that I ended up shutting. Well, not yeah, I shut the channel down because way too many comments. Because if you don't play the exact note at the exact timing that Hetfield does, you you obviously are an asshole. So and you can't play guitar. As for a big break, I, you know, I really didn't have a big break. You know, as for tips, just be yourself, man. I mean, I I tried my best to network. Uh, with a lot of people and frankly everyone I would say blew me the fuck off uh, the only person that gave me the time of day last May because that's when I really started doing YouTube for video games was May 1st with Killzone was uh, Fisticuffs and Martyrs Brigade 99 were the only ones who actually would give me a shout out or a retweet here and there and then since uh, you know we're getting semi popular Bife and I have been, you know, doing a dual commentaries. But other than that, I tried networking on everybody. So the way I look at it is um, just be yourself. Um, only cover or do things that you truly love and enjoy because people can spot fakeness for a mile away. Like there's a bunch of these Call of Duty little whatever. Forget it. Uh, I shouldn't even comment. But they basically, um, they were kind of riding the... 
that's again, I don't want to say another word. They were riding the coattails of someone else, and when uh, Advanced Warfare wasn't doing for all, they all switched instantly to GTA 5 because they're doing it just for views. Cover the stuff that you truly enjoy, and people will hopefully come and watch it. That's the only advice I could say because I, I still don't know what the hell I'm doing in this whole YouTube thing. Okay, and then Amon Stuber, favorite strike, favorite raid, please explain your reasoning. Okay, strike, that's an easy one. I gotta say, summoning pits. I don't know, I think it's the perfect blend of uh, it's not too short, it's not too long. Uh, I love anything Hive related, and that's going to lead into why I like Crota Zen. Um, and I also like the fact that it's on the moon. I don't know, for some reason, lately, I don't know, the past couple months, the moon's my favorite place to go. I like to patrol there. I wish I got the moon patrol thing more, because for some reason, I keep getting Mars all the time. And not that I don't like Mars, I just, I love going to the moon. I don't know why. I just think it, it looks beautiful. I just, I, I love the scenery, even though it's it's bland compared to Venus and Earth. I, I don't know. I just, for some reason, I love the moon. And Crota Zen, man, I, I just... I said to myself the other day, why do I still play the Vault of Glass? The only part I like of the Vault of Glass is killing Atheon and the Gatekeeper because you get to use the Relic and it's a little more fun. I cannot stand the Templar encounter. Uh, it's just not fun for me. It's so frustrating and that splash damage is ridiculous. Crota Zen, I like it. It's straightforward. It's to the point. The gear drops have been better and I just, I, it's, I love it. I think it's so much damn fun. Okay, then we got Matriox Nova. Mesa, does it frustrate you that Bungie's focusing on less important or urgent matters or issues other than the big, obvious, and maybe game-breaking ones? Well, which ones are you talking about? Like the Vault and, the, and also the Fusion Rifles? Well, the Fusion Rifles are getting a nerf. And we all need a Vault. I mean, we all, we all know, they know we need a Vault. But again, I said it in my um, last video about the ride-along. If they make one change to see, see guys, we don't see the behind the scenes things when it comes to net code or gaming code or anything like that. They could change one thing and have it like screw up a zillion other things. So they got to be really careful and handpick what they choose to fix first and foremost. And they probably got to test the hell out of it first because I mean, let's say what if they, uh, okay, they gave us a bigger vault and all of a sudden it totally screwed up the inventory system and you lost a whole bunch of items just from that one change and then they had no way. Uh, we had no way of getting that stuff back. That'd be a pretty damn catastrophe, and I think people would hate us even more with it. So the way I look at it is that they just got to take their time. They they all know what we want, guys. It's just from I think from a coding perspective. Remember, if they change one thing, it could really screw up a lot of other things. So they got to be careful because if they make one mistake, they're already hearing it enough from us what we want. That if they make a mistake and it it, it causes a disaster of losing items or something like that, forget about it. They'll never hear the end of it. Okay, then Sean Honey says, Hey, Mesa, what do you think about adding private matches to Destiny? I would absolutely love that. I actually asked Andrew Weldon, the uh, lead designer for multiplayer, a while back. I think it would be great, one, to appease the probably big esports crowd. And also, you know, there's a lot of clan people that like to play competitive matches. So I think it would be beautiful for them if they could set up their own private custom lobbies and have matches and stream those things and I don't know I mean um, I thought initially they would get more into esports and things like that because I know they were they were talking about it before Destiny release uh, and for people like me I would love it because I would really expand all my PvP videos I would do map breakdowns I would do lines of sight traffic uh, traffic sites I would do weapon testing I would do all sorts of I would just do a, a ton of PvP videos if I could do go into private matches and do some breakdowns things like that so but um, when I tweeted Andrew Weldon, the lead multiplayer designer, I didn't get a no and I didn't get a yes, but I got something as like we know about it and uh, they're looking into it or something like that. And again, guys, remember these things take time, they got to concentrate or focus on other things that are more pertinent to changing right now. So, anyway, hope that answers your question. Okay, then we got Kepler80 says, Hey Mason, when are you going to give us a tour of your video game setup? You know, um, I'll do that in like the next week or two or so. I definitely, um, I had it. I had it planned out for, I don't know, I think last week, but there's not much to see, guys. I'll tell you that right now. The secret to it is a USB stick. That's it. I don't have a capture card. I don't have a banging PC. I got an old MacBook Pro, very, very grassroots, and it's basically, it's mainly because Sony uh, really screwed up the uh, USB transfer, well, videos to USB stick transfer with their last update. I used to rely on two USB sticks, but because of their last update, any video over, I think it's like four minutes, gets basically locked up when you're trying to transfer to USB stick. So... I end up bouncing it as unlisted to YouTube, waiting an hour, and then downloading it, and it's just a big pain in the ass, but I'm definitely going to do one uh, real soon. Okay, Fun Mobile Games X. What are you going to do until new DLC that's coming in Q2? I know you. You're the one from Twitter that I said was rude. Okay, listen, man. I didn't mean you were rude. I just mean you constantly tweet me questions, copy Deej on them, saying, why won't you fix this? Why don't you fix that? I didn't mean that was rude. I just mean when you're constantly asking them to fix things, it gets a little redundant, man. But what am I going to do? I'm going to keep playing Destiny. Uh, I'm going to keep playing uh, Kills on Shadowfall. That's my other favorite love. But other than that, I mean, there's really no other good games that I'm really looking forward to right now. I was thinking of trying Evolve. Still on the fence about it. I mean, do I really want to drop 60 beans on something that I may not like. It looks pretty cool.
cool, but I don't know. Killzone Shadowfall is just, I gotta love that multiplayer, so I'll probably be playing that along with Destiny. Okay, Micah D asks, So Sean, I noticed that all the DLC weapons such as Dragon's Breath, No Land Beyond, and Fourth Horseman are really useless. Do you feel Bungie needs to put more thought process into perks when creating exotic weapons? I'm going to say 100%, man. I'm really kind of, it was a real buzzkill with the exotics uh, for this one. And um, I think we needed more exotics. I also was hoping for some uh, more exotic bounties as well. I don't know, I just think, I, I mean, let's face it. That's one of the, probably the biggest driving forces behind a lot of people to play the Vault of Glass, to play raids, to play the weekly nightfalls. Is we want to get an exotic. We all we all love our exotics, and at this point in the life cycle, I mean, I still am missing the Mita, Thunderlord, and what else? There's one other one I forget. Uh, oh, wait, and Hardlight. Um, people want you know new exotic. Fourth Horseman's a blast in PvP. You just got to get close to people and max out your uh, agility. Uh, no Land Beyond, whatever. I think too many people made videos about how terrible that thing is. And Dragon's Breath, I mean, it's kind of fun, but once you have a Gallahorn or a Hungry Crota, you're really not going to use it. Ooh, I get Noob Tube. But uh, yeah, I wish they had better exotics and, well, one, I wish I had more exotics for the Dark Below and better exotics. So, totally agree with you, man. Okay, and then Alex Kernikin, I hope I'm saying that right, man. It says, Mesa Sean, are you ever planning to stream other games in your channel or play different games besides Destiny? Yeah, uh, kind of answered that already, but I, you know what? About streaming, I would stream some kills on Shadowfall when I'm just playing it, but I don't know if you guys would want to watch it or other people. It is a really small audience. I mean, a, a diehard, uh, hardcore audience, that's for sure. But you know what? I think people need to get into it. That's the thing. And especially because that game is on sale probably because it's been out for, what, a year and a half now? Definitely a must-buy. Alright, so that's going to wrap it up for this episode, guys. And actually, I think I did pretty well this game. I think it was like a 2.3 KDR or something like that. I don't know. Using, of course, the overpowered Pole Dancer subclass. Uh, but yeah, expect um, next episode of How to Make the Crucible Fun is going to be either the Titan Striker or the Titan Defender. I know I got all the footage. I just got to kind of go through it. So, And that's it, guys. So drop a like on this video only if you see fit. Follow me on Twitter. Mesa Sean. Check out my stream. Links will be in the description. And that's it. You stay beautiful, Guardians.